Oh, I'm sure I'm not the only sicko here who enjoys a little mayhem during the festive season. Oh sure, our hearts are filled with warmth during this time of giving, and no matter how old I get, the child in me always rears its ugly, greedy head on Christmas morning. But after the gifts have been handed out, and there's not a drop of eggnog left in the joint, it's time to retreat to the TV room and enjoy what I call the 12 Days of Wretchmas. The first six in this segment are all from the best slasher decade of them all, the bloody beautiful 1980s. On the first day of Wretchmas, my true love made me watch. Christmas Evil 1980. This movie is one big what the fuck from start to finish. First, we see young Harry creeping near the stairs to get a look at Santa, and instead sees... Yup, you guessed it. Santa Snatch sniffing. Say that five times really fast. I bet Harry did, as it affects him into adulthood, and we see him dancing and pirouetting around his apartment, which is full of Christmas decor. Not decorations. Decor. He spies on the neighborhood kids and keeps a ledger on who he feels is good or naughty. And before the movie is over, his co-workers, who treated him like shit, find out how Harry deals with those who have been naughty. End of the movie is weird. After a confrontation with his brother, he flees in his van while being pursued by a Frankenstein mob of villagers, and his van sails off a bridge and goes airborne as a narrator recites the final lines from The Night Before Christmas. Like I said, what the fuck? On the second day of wretch, Miss My True Love made me watch. To All a Good Night, also from 1980. I really don't know how to describe this movie. On the one hand, it's a very atypical 80s slasher movie, and some elements of it are a blatant ripoff of Friday the 13th. You killed my baby. Look what you did to him! And on the other hand, the dialogue and acting is so bad that it rivals most porn movies. In fact, there were about half a dozen times I actually forgot I was watching a horror movie and expected some bass music to kick in. I'll show you your room. <laughs> well, here you are. It's a train wreck of a movie if I ever saw one, and MST3K would have had a field day with it. But you know what? I couldn't stop watching it once I started, and that has to count for something because I usually have about 10 minutes when it comes to movies, and if it can't catch my attention in that time frame, it's out of there. So take my word for it, and take a long sniff off of this stink burger. On the third day of wretch, Miss My True Love made me watch. The Dorm That Dripped Blood from 1982. Well, this one really isn't Christmas-themed, but it's set during a Christmas break. I happened to find the uncut version, and it was once on Britain's list of video nasties, so that was good enough for me to include it. A group of kids in an old university dorm that's scheduled to be torn down, and they've been hired to clean it out over the holiday break. It's low-budget and grainy in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of way. The acting is about as cliche as the subject matter, but the kills are fucking awesome. A drill in the back of the head. Lord have mercy. I suppose there could be a lot more to complain regarding this movie if you really wanted to go all Siskel and Ebert on it, but it does its job in hitting all the 80s slasher G-spots. I will say, though, the ending of the movie is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. There is no real climax, even when the killer is revealed, and the film literally just cuts to closing credits with no closure or cliffhanger. It's like someone hanging up on you in the middle of a phone call. But I would say, hell yeah, watch it if you love 80s slasher movies. On the fourth day of Wretchmas, my true love made me watch. Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1984. This actually, it's one of my favorites. This movie bucks the traditional slasher trends where we have to wait for the end of the movie to find out who the identity of the killer is. There's no final girl, unless you really want to count Mother Superior. I don't. And we get to see the killer's journey from his tragic childhood experiences to the fire and brimstone punishments he got at the orphanage. You knew this kid was going to grow up fucked up, but he does make an effort to contain his Christmas rage before finally going batshit. He's a seemingly normal, nice kid who works in a toy store after being released from the orphanage at 18. It even has that 80s inspirational music as we see a montage of him happily moving boxes and helping customers. But along comes Christmas and a promotion from his boss from Stockboy to Santa, 
and you know shit is going to hit the fan. Don't miss this classic. On the fifth day of Gretchmas, my true love made me watch. Shifting away from the killer Santa cliche, it's Gremlins, also from 1984. More of a comedy horror. Who could have guessed that such a cute little creature could have spawned a whole theater of maniacal beer-guzzling freaks? They run amuck in this small town, and between partying Animal House style and exposing themselves, they try and kill any human they come in contact with. The premise is pretty simple. Billy receives this odd teddy bear-like animal from his father as a Christmas gift. Three simple rules. No bright light. No contact with water. And no food after midnight. Bright lights can kill them. Water causes them to multiply rapidly. And food after midnight morphs them into these little turds that try and overrun the town. The gremlins, led by Stripe, are hell-bent on causing as much destruction and aggravation as they can, much to their own amusement. But we know their hell-bent ways will be their undoing. If you've never seen this movie, you're totally missing out. On the sixth day of wretch, miss my true love made me watch. I gagged my way through this one. Don't open till Christmas. Again, 1984. Big year for holiday horror movies. This one, made in the land of good manners, is a bit of a role reversal with Santas being murdered instead of the other way around. The movie is pretty obscure and it's a borderline exploitation film. The editing, continuity, and cinematography make it all but impossible to follow with any degree of dedication. And worse off, it's as boring as whale shit. I didn't think I'd find a movie worse than To All A Good Night, but thanks to the British and the magic of public domain, I didn't have to pay for the pain it caused. If you're looking to just add another notch to your bedpost, by all means give it a look-see. Otherwise, steer clear of this sewer filth. <laughs> 